Hi, I'm Julie Cook from Flying Colours Leadership. I'm here on the Prosperity Show today and excited to be here to talk about company culture and millennials and how they impact our, our company culture and how important it is for us as leaders to really expand our culture and have great teams. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got none other than Julie Cook herself. Julie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Well, obviously, I know you are, um, you know, busy working interstate in Melbourne. And thank you so much for uh, taking your time out to have a quick chat with us. Now, viewers, if you're just tuning into this episode, um, Julie is a leadership coach and a team development expert from a company called Flying Colors Leadership. Now, she has worked with leaders from small to large companies over a number of years, and she knows that every little second that a leader has with their people counts. Now, today we're going to be exploring how she helps um, leaders like yourself or future leaders in you to actually integrate and have a proper, you know, uh, business culture so that you can integrate all the different age groups that are going to be working under you or with you, um, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to be highlighting, especially the millennial, um, you know, type people that are now entering the workforce or are already in the workforce and how you can actually seamlessly integrate them to what you're already doing and how they can, you can actually get the most out of them as employees. Now, you know, Julie, we've already thanked you for your time here. Tell us a little bit um, about Flying Colors and how it came about and what it is that you actually do for your clients. So um, Flying Colors Leadership came about because I had spent a lot of time in corporate and I'd been leading teams and struggling and watching my my mum led teams. And so I'd grown up actually watching leaders really struggle with leadership. And I was part of a large organization and actually coaching leaders. And what I discovered was some of the things that we're doing in organizations were actually not helping our leaders. So I went through a bit of a journey of self-discovery first to actually go, well, you know, I need to discover more about leadership rather than just what I know. And I did a bit more education about it. And through that education, Flying Colors was born. And this passion that I have for helping leaders and helping leaders get the most out of their time, get the most out of their biggest asset, which is their team, and actually have that amazing culture that instead of waking up going, oh my God, it's Monday morning, I go, I get to spend time with these amazing people in my team. So getting everyone to have this, you know, because we spend so much time with people that we work with. So making it really enjoyable and through a great team and a great top culture, that's how we create that. So just a little bit passionate about it, as you can see. Understandable. And um, you just tweaked my brain a little bit when you say that you were born amongst leaders. I mean, obviously your last name is one of the most prominent names uh, in the <laughs> in the discovery of Australia. So leadership definitely must be, um, you know, in, in your blood there. Now you mentioned something that's, um, you know, a, 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 a born of contention these days in a lot of businesses. You mentioned company culture. Could you explain to us why company culture is more important than ever at this, um, you know, particular time we're working these days? So there's a, there's a few really key reasons because our company culture actually impacts some really key things. It impacts the output of our people, but it also impacts the customer experience. So if I have a culture that is flat or people that don't want to be in my team or in my business, even if they try to give great customer service, they will really fall short of the mark because our customers can feel when you walk into a business, they can feel whether you want to be there or not. So the culture of the business, you know, we focus so much on making sure that we say the right things to the customers, but that culture is that whole vibe of your business. So as soon as that customer walks in your door, as soon as they interact with anyone from your team, they don't need to say anything because they can feel that culture. 
Understandable. So what you're trying to say there is um, company culture is quickly proving to be a must have rather than just a nice to have in order for you to actually uh, create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Because as soon as a customer walks in, if the culture is bad, then, you know, they're going to fill it and probably not make a purchase, um, you know, straight after that. Right. That's exactly right because they can actually feel if the team doesn't want to be there. And that, you know, a lot of times we used to talk about this as motivation, but it's really culture because if I have a great culture, then my team want to be there. But sometimes we haven't really fleshed out how do I create that culture because it, it started to become this elusive thing that, you know, if I was a really amazing leader, I would just chance upon great culture instead of there's things I can do to create it. Understandable. Now, for the first time in history, uh, Julie, millennials have become the largest generation to actually cohort the Australian, even the UK, and I think the United States workforce with almost, say, uh, in Australia, they're saying there's almost 34 million making up um, the labor force. Now, millennials are not... Uh, essentially from out of space, but they did grow up in a different setting to the maybe setting that both you and me grew up in. And it's, you know, from previous generations, how can you then help, um, you know, leaders that are on top to actually integrate millennials so that they can work together and understand each other so that they create that culture that we're talking about? Yeah, I think the, so one of the key things is to understand the skill set that they come with. So like this week, I've been doing some workshops with um, store managers of an organization in regards to digital and the fear that, you know, certain age groups have with digital. The millennials don't have that because they've grown up differently. So it's a huge skill set that they actually bring. So I think sometimes instead of fearing, you know, how do I lead these people looking at all that they bring with them that they actually bring to your team and all that they can help with your business as well? Because here's the thing, they actually think a bit differently as well. Millennials don't have the type of limitations that maybe you and I have put on ourselves. For them, the world is limitless. So if you're a leader in a business and you're thinking about how can I improve my business, you know, it's great to have someone in your team that actually thinks in that space. Instead of, no, I can't do that, they think, why not? Great stuff. So how best then do you um, encourage leaders at the moment to actually, um, you know, start integrating with them so that they can work alongside? So I think it's about being flexible about the way we do things. So every organization has certain structures and, you know, that's, we need that, but there needs to be an element of flexibility because if you have a millennial and you say millennial and you say, you know, this A, then B, then C, and you have to wait in between, you know, that doesn't really fit where the millennials are at. So being flexible about, well, this is the pathway, but there's not only one way to get there. And communication is really key. So a lot of leaders want all their team to communicate like them instead of going, well, how do I need to communicate to you? You know, I was in a session today with some amazing leaders and we were talking about asking the question of what do you need from me? And sometimes for leaders that can be a, like that can be a confronting question because we don't know what they're going to say. But for millennials, they really want people around them that will be supporting them and giving them different avenues to grow. So that communication piece with what do you need from me and communicating you know, how they like to communicate to get the best out of them and to be most productive. Because if we try to get millennials to actually just be like us, then they feel really stifled. So really key, and I say this so much, to think about what the person in front of you needs. So I ask all leaders to say, what do you need from me? Before I say to my team, this is what I need from you. All right. Great stuff. That's just, you know, human psychology. What's in it for me and how, how can I be of value to the next person? So that also then leads, um, you know, us to, you know, digressing a little bit back because you said you did work a little bit in corporate and you went through a lot of professional development. Now, besides leaders being flexible, 
um, is professional development in the workplace something that is also constituted as the culture um, you know of a business yeah definitely development is key because you know for us to get to the next level of thinking of strategy of you know anything in the business we need to get some new ideas flowing in because otherwise it becomes and we've all heard it in a business this is what we've always done here so personal development is so key and it's about leaders investing in themselves so a lot of organizations they're waiting for you know someone at the top of the organization to say this is what we're going to roll out to you and this is the great thing about millennials that fits in with this as well is millennials will go and search for the information. And it's, it's something that, you know, I definitely admire because, you know, that personal development piece, we have to go and search for it sometimes. It's not always going to be delivered to us. But how much we develop ourselves will really show through in the results that we get in our team and our organisation. Understandable, Julie. Now, obviously, we've learned quite a lot, uh, you know, in in, in this um, episode here. You know, how to build that culture, how to maintain it by being flexible, and just you know, giving each other space by doing good and being good to um, you know to one another, creating that culture that you know uh, makes sure that everybody is thriving and everybody else is being productive now you have built and um, you also deliver right uh, tailored programs um, that fit you know specific businesses and you know depending on their needs and you know as, as you know no two businesses are the same can you just walk us through some of your programs um, you know, so that people that are probably watching this episode right now, sitting at the edge of their seat, now thinking, do I need to be on Instagram, Snapchatting, so that I can relate to the millennials? Or <laughs> is there something that they can learn from you one on one? Yes. Yeah, so um, I do what I what I do, and I do it a little bit differently because a lot of people that are in the type of industry that I'm in, they have, you know set programs that they just deliver. And this is, if you come to me, this is X, Y, and Z. And I do things a little bit differently because I talk so much about individuals. So every, you're right, every organization is different. So what I actually do for a lot of businesses, large and small, is I actually go in and talk to them and get a feel for their business and hear what their pain points are, what their needs are. And I actually craft short and long workshops that actually suit their organization. So right now I'm working with an organization for an 18 month project that we're, you know, slowly drip feeding um, leadership, different types of leadership to their teams. But there's lots of, you know, there's strategy sessions that I do with leaders and, you know, hitting those really key elements. So communication, delegation is huge. That time management piece and how do I do that? And, you know, it may seem a bit funny, but even confidence, like I talk to lots of leaders about confidence and balance, because here's the thing, leaders care so much, but sometimes that actually stops them from performing like they should be. So it's not about what platform do I get on? It's about, and you know, one of the key things that I talk to people about, about human connection, regardless of what technology we have, we still want to connect human to human. And if we can get that happening in our teams, then, you know, we can make anything happen. Oh, uh, that, that is beautiful. Connecting human to human. And that's how the world, you, you know, revolves. You know, people might have all the technology. People might have all these little gadgets, but they still need, you know, the touch of yet another person and the validation of them going to work where they're actually respected. Well, Judy, I can't thank you enough um, for your time today, the value that you shared with us and all the little golden nuggets that you've thrown um, down, especially that of company culture. Um, and if you've been watching this show and if you haven't subscribed to this show, you're missing out on experts um, like Judy that come in every single time to just drop their knowledge, even if they are on, um, you know, on holiday or traveling interstate, they make their time. So, you know, thank you so much for that, uh, Julie. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure, you know, talking about my passion, of course. And, you know, my purpose is here to help leaders. So love having the opportunity to talk to people.
Understandable. And, and this has been fantastic because I don't think we've had an episode that talks about company culture and how it really is important. And well, not, not, not that it wasn't important before, but it's quickly proving to something that everybody must have rather than a nice to have. So it's been an absolute pleasure having you on here today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is that enough? Is that all right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. that's more than enough. <laughs> I'm going to sell this on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great stuff. I'm going to take this.